Well, hello, thank you so much for joining me again. My name is Kelly Williams, lifestyle management coach. And today we will be talking about the three C's for conversions. And what do I mean by that? I mean, how do you get people to buy your coaching program? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I'm excited to be bringing this content to you. So, um, for the sake of um, going too far in depth, I do want to just explain a little bit about the context about where this comes from. So many of my clients and um, people in my community, they I see them getting frustrated. They're out there putting their content out there. They're out there announcing that they've got workshops and masterclasses and things like that, but people still aren't buying. So I had a call recently with somebody and uh, she was very curious how she could fill her coaching program. And so her and I, we talked about some things and um, they really aligned with where I want to go in 2023 with my focus and my vision for my own business. And so in 23, um, I, along with these three things, there are some other things that I think we must be very um, intentional and strategic with so that we can build our businesses profitably. Okay. It's one thing to just build a business and to be spinning your wheels and going, you know, just going through the motions. But then there's another thing when you want to be intentional about it and do it profitably. So that's what I'm talking about today. How can we get people to buy our coaching programs? And what are those three C's for conversion? All right. All right. So let's dig in. Number one, the first thing is your content. I cannot say that enough, your content. And so oftentimes in the clubhouse spaces that I'm in and in my even in my Facebook community, my impeccable impact community, I talk about content and why it's so important that people really understand who it is that we are, who it is that we help and how it is that we help them. Our content really delivers a message to them that is going to speak to our area of providing a service for them or a product for some of you who are product-based businesses, but your content does the selling for you. Now, in order to be effective with your content, um, of course, you need to have a strategy, um, but you also have to be very, very clear on who it is that your client is. Who is it that you're talking to? Who is your client or customer? And I mean, really, really know this person, know where they're shopping, know what time of day they shop, know what they're thinking at 5 p.m., know what time they go to bed. And some people may say, well, look, um, I, I don't niche down. And I'm going to tell you as a, as a business who um, aligns with the, the word and will of God, I will say that is okay. So in that case, you're going to have to be even more strategic with how you go about delivering that message. But um, for most of us, there's a very specific person that we are speaking to. There is a very specific type of person that we're speaking to. And so our content is what we use to help resonate that message with them. So in our content, we are um, informing them, educating them, entertaining them. We are building connection with them. We are building community with them. We are building conversion and conversation and all these things with them. But our content should be done in such a way that people, real they, they began to really resonate with us. And they really begin to feel that they know who we are and they really begin to feel that they know how we can serve them. One of the things that a lot of people um, that I speak with get concerned about is, well, you know, I got on a call with somebody, but they didn't become a client. And one of my first questions is, what does your content look like? So I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I'm from the school that if you get to the point where you're on a call with somebody, they're pretty sure that they want to work with you because of your content. And so I, I recommend that your content, number one, be branded. And when I say branded, I'm talking about, yes, the logo, yes, the colors, have, a, have brand colors that are attractive. I see brand colors all the time that are horrible looking. Let me tell you, the Cleveland Cavaliers for many, many years, I'm from Cleveland, so I'm just going to go with what I know. The Cleveland Cavaliers used to have these colors, orange and blue. My God. And it wasn't the best color combination. 
But I'm just going to say this. Listen, listen, you take it for what it's worth. I'm going to tell you, they won a national championship after they changed their brand colors. I'm just saying. <laughs> so you want to make sure that your brand identity really speaks to your client or your customer and who it is that you're trying to reach. Do your colors really resonate with them or do they gross them out? There are some people on social media that I unfollowed because their brand colors disgusted me. And I know that might seem shallow, but mm -mm, I was absolutely turned off by their brand colors. So you want to make sure that those things that you have in place are, yeah, they got to be attractive because here's what um, being a part of Mary Kay Cosmetics taught me. The eye buys, period. The eye buys. If it looks good, people will be attracted to it. That's the first thing, the way that it looks, okay? So you want your content to be branded. The other thing about your content is it's easy to say have original content, but can you take inspired content and make it original? For instance, um, do you have time in your day or have you scheduled time where you go search out niche specific blogs? So if you happen to be a fitness coach, do you subscribe to any blogs or any influencers that put out content that you can build upon or even refute and then build content based off of that, right? So content doesn't always have to come by what you're thinking. Did you read something that you that got you thinking? Well, what are your thoughts about what you read? Can you now create content over that? Can you create a video that speaks to that? One of the things about being a Christian business owner that, that I think too many people overlook is the Bible for content inspiration. Easy peasy. Can you put out a can you put out a, a scripture every day for somebody on either either written or video or audio? Yes. Is there a story, a, a biblical character that really resonates with you as the person or a situation in the story that really resonates with your area of coaching? I'm imagining that answer is yes. And so look for different avenues of inspiration so that you can develop content for your audience, all right? You also want to make sure that this content is appropriately formatted. And when I say appropriately formatted, yes, I'm talking about the size dimensions because different platforms have different sizes. If you go into Canva, okay, if you go into Canva, you will see, well, if you have the pro, Canva pro, you will see that Facebook size dimensions are different than Instagram size dimensions. You will see that LinkedIn size dimensions are different than Facebook size dimensions. So are you using the most appropriate format for your content? All right. So, you know, that doesn't mean that your content won't get looked at if you use a different format. But just consider that. Are you using the most appropriate format? And are you um, uh, posting or putting your content out on the most appropriate platform? So sometimes your content may not go on social media. Sometimes your content is best delivered in person, okay? At an event, maybe you're doing a, um, a keynote or something like that, or you're hosting a networking event and you're delivering content that way. Or the, the same type of content that goes on Instagram is not the same type of content that goes on on LinkedIn. Now I know, you know, and, and I happen to be one of them without sharing all the details, how can you, um, you know, I, I share with people that you should re repurpose, right? And I'm like, well, you know, how can you have all these great ideas and not put them out there, right? Well, yes, repurpose, but repurpose your content in a way that best suits that platform so you can maximize your visibility. Okay. You also want to make sure that you are diversifying the modality by which you are delivering your content. So for instance, I love saying this about Instagram. Instagram used to be my primary uh, platform and I, it's not. And right now, I, I don't know exactly. Well, I think I know, but I'm a little resistant. So I just need a little bit more confirmation from Christ about my primary platform now. But um, on Instagram, one of the things that I know about that is like, if you post out a reel, put out a reel, a reel, listen, what reels do are they, they share your content to people who do not know you right? That's what reels are intended to do. And carousel posts are intended to bring people and keep them on your feed. So how do you do that? You put out an informational reel and then that brings somebody to your feed. And now they're looking at a carousel post where you have each 
each uh, slide or each picture is highly detailed and educating that person. So now this new person who has been made aware of you is now impressed because you're educating them on whatever it is that your area of coaching. All right. And so that's just an example. That's just an example. There's there's long form video, short form video. There are other examples of how you can um, diversify the modality by which you put out your content so that it best suit, um, of course, the platform and your audience. One thing I want to uh, really recommend is that don't beat around the bush. Just get to the point with most of your content. All right. Don't beat around the bush. Now, yes, for some people like the flowery language and things like that. And I'm not saying completely eradicate that from your copy. But if you know what the goal is going in and create content, create captions, create pictures that speak to that thing, that goal. What is the goal? Is the goal to drive people to your lead magnet? Well, then it needs to speak to your lead magnet. Is the goal to get people into your membership community? Well, it needs to speak to your membership community. Are you trying to grow your Facebook group or are you trying to do a thing? Whatever the goal is, if, if you're trying to sell a masterclass, if you're trying to uh, get people into a clubhouse room, whatever the goal is, your content needs to speak to that. It needs to be com concise and you need to say that. That would be your call to action, your call to action. And let me, uh, before I move on to the next point, let me give you guys, now this might be my personal pet peeve, but one thing I do know is that a confused buyer does not buy. So if you have a link tree with a ton of stuff on it, I'm telling you right now, you're confusing people. My recommendation is if you want people to download your lead magnet, then the only link that should be in any type of bio or accessible to your people should be the link for your lead magnet. For instance, I'm going to tell you, I have the Impeccable Impact Mentorship Community. And so all I don't have any more link trees. Everything goes directly to that community. That is what that that's all my reels directly to that community. All of my static posts, directly to that community. My YouTube, when I talk about it on YouTube, directly to that community. All right. So I have one call to action so that you can be very focused on how your content is delivering that message you want to get to your audience. All right. So the first C is content. The second C all right, is community, community, community. So over in Clubhouse, um, back in September, um, I shared some prophetic downloads that God gave me. And he had been giving me these downloads since June of 2022. But it was September of 22 that I began to release what God was telling me about their business. And one of the things I mentioned was that community, how important community is going to be in 2023. So community is a huge part of your business, whether you realize it or not. Okay. And I know you might be thinking, well, look, I'm not a community leader. If you're a kingdom builder, yes, you are. You were called to be the head and not the tail just for that. Listen, the word is very clear about that. And so for that point right there, you are a community builder. And now you're called to bring people together, gather people together so that they can move in tandem with the will of God as you lead them as a coach. I'm just letting you know, if you didn't know that, now you know, but I want you to think about how you can go about building and curating a community in this next season for your business. Think about a campaign that you can create that are going to drive people to the community. And the best way to do that is going to be with your lead magnet. So for instance, I'm just saying, I'm just putting this out there. Here's a strategy for somebody to try or to take to God and ask, is this something you want me to do and deliver to the people? Think about this. So you are a mindset coach. Let's say you're a mindset coach and you've got this um, amazing lead magnet. Uh, this, this, you've done this assessment, you've got this, this assessment and people can take this assessment quiz type thing and, and um, see what course of action they should take, where their mindset needs to be shifted. All right. And so you've got this lead magnet. Now, the next step for your lead magnet or the, the next step you know, they're going to want to say, okay, well, what's next? The next step should be, if you're interested in curating a community, it should be join my community. Now, does a community have to be a paid community? No, it does not. Your community could be housed on LinkedIn. It could be housed on Clubhouse. It could be a Facebook group. Your community could re reside within your email list. OK, 
Okay, you can nurture your community that way. But you want to draw people to a place, a container where now they are able to get more information from you, learn more about you, talk to others who are like them about things that you talk about in your coaching niche. Um, we use the example of the mindset coach. So these are other individuals who are on this journey of shifting, right? because they are now in community. Um, when you're thinking about curating this community out and as it relates to this content piece as well, I want you to think about what are some of the main things that your, um, that your client is going through? Main thing that the people in your community that you're curating, what are some of the problems that they are suffering with? And I want you to think about how you can come up with fast, no brainer solutions for them. Give as you engage on the daily, Yes, I said daily. As you engage on the daily with this community, what are some ways that they can get that they can um, uh, follow a directive and get quick action? So, for instance, in the Impeccable Impact Mentorship Community, I just put out a poll today. Now, we'll see how many people answer it, but I put out a poll about um, content prompts. Is that something that people would be interested in? And so we're going to see. And so, um, if, if enough people want it, I will provide the Impeccable Impact Mentorship community with daily content prompts, things that they can put out every day. And I'm going to give them more than one. How about that? I'm going to, if they want it, I'm going to give them more than one content prompt where um, they are able to use one, two, or three, or however many I give them every single day, or they can bank them and use them at another time when they need content to put out for their audience. So I know that in my community, a lot of people do talk about their content and the struggle with it and coming up with inspiration and things like that. So I want to be a, a solution for them. So I can, how about this? put out content in my group that will help people with their content. Now that happens to be me as a coach for coaches, but how can you provide your audience with something every single day where they can see a win? So that could be a tip, that could be a hack. What is it that you can do that is gonna remind them, oh my goodness, this is a great community. Is there some type of resource that you can give them? Now I'm not saying you have to give them a resource every day, but can you give them a tip on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays? Can you give them a resource on Tuesdays? Can you give them a video on Thursdays? What is it that you can do to provide them with value and make and, and remind them why being a part of your community is such a, a is such a good thing? Ready? The other thing, as people come into your community, nurture them, reach out to them, show up for them often, um, message them, get to know who they are, get to know a little bit about their families. You know, in the beginning stages, when you don't have a ton of people, it becomes very easy to do that. As you start to develop more people, you might have to get somebody to help out, but um, also ask your community members to invite other people to the community. I'm gonna tell you in the Impeccable Impact Mentorship community, and you guys will, listen, this is my joke, but you're gonna always hear me say it, like the full, you know, the full name of it. But um, I want you to think, how can you see if others, or what ways can you encourage others to invite people to the community? So again, in my community, I happen to have an ambassador program where I pay, you get paid for um, referring people to the community. You get $50 for referring people to the community. So it is very possible that in the, in the community, the community will pay for itself. Like it pays for itself membership in my community will eventually pay for itself. I mean, I'm just, it is what it is. But how can you encourage people to continue to share what it is that you have in your community so that others want to join in and come along for the ride as well? So I want you to think about what that looks like even in your community, all right? And then again, make sure that all of your content, if you are looking to grow and build and curate a community. Make sure that all of your content points to that and that you definitely get that, um, that email so that if something happens, you're still able to reach out to them um, uh, despite you know glitches and social media going down, et cetera, et cetera. And you guys know what I mean because Clubhouse has gone down. Uh, Facebook has gone down. I, they've all gone down. I don't know if TikTok is TikTok. 
TikTok has gone down because I'm not on there yet, but they've all gone down. So I really want you to just consider how can you continue to nurture that community via email, all righty? All right, so the first thing we talked about was the content. The second thing we talked about was community. Now, I wanna say this, we're gonna head over to the third C and I'm kind of gonna go by this one a little bit fast because we don't have time to dig into this one. This, this is not the third C, but this is part of it. As you build community, there will be conversation about you, uh, how you're able to serve them, how you're, what your coaching looks like and um, the successes that people are finding. People will start to talk. There will be talk about this community that you're building. There will be talk within the community that you're building. And so because of that, now there's an expectation. Here we go with the third C. There is an expectation for conversions, conversions of money, conversions of clients. All righty. So this is what I want you to think about. What types of, what does a conversion conversation look like for you? right? So many of us are marketing our businesses online. Some of us are doing our businesses on, um, doing our businesses in person. And I've even got some clients who listen, y'all for real, for real. I've got some clients who are not on social media, yet they are building thriving businesses through blogging. Yes, y'all blogging is still a thing. So what does that look like? What are the call to actions that you're giving people that, that uh, come across your content that are now able to create conversations where you are converting them to clients? So I'm going to tell you one of the biggest things that you can do um, with your community is now have a workshop or a masterclass or some type of an event right? That's great for conversions. Let me tell you where a lot of people go wrong with this. Um, and it depends on what level of seriousness you, you want to have with your events, but um, you got to take these things seriously. People are counting on you, if especially if this is a paid event, people are counting on you to deliver them great value. And so how, and, and the only way you can deliver that great value to the people is if you, if you, of course, show up, but remind them to show up, especially if it's a paid event. So um, I remember last year when I did... I had a paid event at the end of the year around this time last year, and I, I had about 41, 42 people pay. They invested to come to the event, and I do know that it was Christmas time, and it was in the evening, and I know people, you know, all the holiday stuff, but I had about 17 people come, and in the grand scheme of things, um, the event went over really well, all was well, but what could I have done better? Let me share with you what I could have done better. Okay. Now, if I ever have another event to that scale, I will do things better. I promise I will do things better. But for like a $47 masterclass or, um, or, or less than that, um, I may not be so intentional on this. But for things that are higher priced, I, I know that this is what I would do better. And I, even as I speak right now, I would encourage you, you don't have to let the cost of the investment or the, the dollar amount of the investment you don't have to let that be the determining factor of how well you show up for your people. But let me let me tell you what I would have done better. Now, I've got a LinkedIn masterclass, shameless plug. I've got a LinkedIn masterclass coming up in um, on January 14th. All right. January 14th, this LinkedIn masterclass. And I will be promoting that. Now, if you're already a part of the Impeccable Impact Mentorship Community, you get the masterclass absolutely F-R-E-E. -E. If you're not, you've got to invest or you can join the community and get be a part of this masterclass. But for those people who are not a part of my community and they will be hopping in on this masterclass, for them, what I'm doing is um, they will receive a lot of emails from me from the moment that they register to the time that the that the masterclass starts. I promise they will get probably no less than 10 emails where I will be sharing with them why they want to be at the event. I will be sharing with them what they will gain from the event. I will be giving them a client testimonial about somebody who has uh, found traction or even success on LinkedIn um, as a result of what I've shared with them and have them encourage people to come to the event. 
I will make sure that they will understand all of the logistics of the event. I will make sure that they get the, the workbook for the event. I'm, I will make sure that they have a lot of communication that the event is starting, make sure that they remove distractions if they can, make sure that they do all of these things, right? Leading up to the event. I will be so intentional about making sure that they show up for that event so that they can get the value. And of course, throughout the event, they're going to get the value, blah, 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 blah. And then I will send them a follow-up email. Everybody that invests any amount financially into any of my events from this day forward will always get a replay always. So I will make sure that as a, as a result of attending the event, here is your replay. And then I will check in, hey, how did you like the replay? Will you be able to implement it? And, and as you can see, I'm just, you know, I'm going on and on and on. I'm going to nurture this person. I am going to nurture this person. I'm going to invite them to my community if they're not already a part of it. I'm going to remind them and show them where they can gain access to my content, my YouTube channel, my LinkedIn profile, and all the other places where I show up for content. And I'm going to make sure that they know that I care about them, the coach, because I'm telling you right now, uh, um, Things are small enough where I can do it and I can enlist the support of my team to help me find out more about this person so that I can reach out to them personally. Listen, you guys, here we go. This is a pro tip with a voice note or a video note for them on their preferred social media platform. I want them to know that I care because that's what we do in community. But that also helps with the conversion, the conversion. So when I talk about LinkedIn, I mean, it is what it is. There is no shame in my game. When I talked about LinkedIn at my or when I talk about it um, at my event, I will be promoting my impeccable impact mentorship community. I want to grow that community. I want to grow that community. I'm going to be sharing with them all the benefits of being a part of that community. So they will be gaining something very valuable to them in their business, but they will also be um, they will also um, be learning the benefits of being in community with me as a part of that conversion. Alrighty. So when people end up converting, um, and I think this goes without saying, you want to make sure you're celebrating them and promoting them, whatever it is that they're doing, um, whatever it is, like um, I, I coach businesses. Okay. So I coach businesses. You may not be a business coach, but if you are very excited about this person who has now joined you on their fitness journey and celebrate them, celebrate them. Let her, let the world know how, how excited you are now for your client, for joining you on the journey. You want the light to shine brightly on them. This is the one thing about communities. I want y'all to write this down. Okay. Take a note in your community. As you, you disseminate your content, as you curate and grow this community, as you create these conversations and convert them to clients, you want to make sure that the people that you were before, that they feel seen, that they feel heard, that they feel valued, and that they feel safe with you, okay? Seen, heard, valued and safe. Those are so important as you do this. All righty. Okay. So again, I hope that um, these three C's are things that you guys can use in your businesses and um, implement because in this next season, I really believe that uh, people are ready. They are ready. They are ready to be face to face. They are ready to be with others. And people also realize they can't do this alone. So for those of you looking to, um, to fill your programs, might I suggest that, yeah, you might be doing okay with your content, but are you building community that leads to conversations and conversions? As you are looking to fill your programs, are you build, are you developing content that speaks to that? As you look to build your programs, maybe you do have good content. Maybe you do have a Facebook community, but are you actively pursuing conversations that are going to lead to conversions? 
So you may be doing all these things and, and doing okay. But if you're not, I want you to really consider if these are some things that you can implement in your business and then identify what those next steps are. Now, of course, if you want, please, by all means, join the Impeccable Impact Mentorship Community where I talk about this kind of stuff all the time or reach out to somebody that can help you. You know, listen, I think I'm a good... I think I'm a good, you know, a good coach for the job, but may not be me, maybe somebody else. So reach out to somebody that can help you get to that place where you are filling up your program and you are seeing people um, uh, really accelerate in life because of the transformation that you are able to offer them. All righty. So with that being said, for those of you that are watching online, um, thank you so much. And I will be back again for another talk on how you can build your business with impeccable impact. And for those that